Okay, so in this part of the tutorial, what we'll do is that we'll have a look at some OWASP scanning. So OWASP uh, defines the, the, the major risks, and the major risk has been for many years uh, code injection. We can also have broken authentication and a whole range of things. As we'll see a little bit later, there's a method called XFrame headers, which can be used uh, to be able to protect some of these things. So as part of the scan, what we want to do is to be able to identify and hopefully uh, inform best practice for integrating these X headers. But what we'll do first is to look uh, basically at, uh, at how uh, WASP ZAP operates. Okay, so I've set up my, my Metasploitable instant here. Okay, hopefully it's all connected. And I'll just ping it, just to see if it's alive. Uh, and it is. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to run OWASP zap. And see how we get on. Okay, so you can run it from the command line or you can obviously run it from uh, the, the menu option. Okay, so here we are, and we have no sites set up uh, just now. So there's a whole lot of options that we can use, but we'll just go for the, the basic uh, spider and active scan just now. So our website that we're scanning is here, and we'll go for the DVWA site okay so it's going to take a few minutes to to run obviously we can do deeper scans uh, from here but we should be able to get a, a quick uh, scan uh, to be able to identify the flags okay so the flags are coming in here we have red flags amber ones yellow and then uh, informational priority areas Okay, so anything that comes in red, we really need to deal with, probably. Amber ones are pretty serious. And yellow ones are low-level alerts that uh, we might want to do something about. Okay, so they're coming in now, and we've already got one amber uh, alert on our site. With uh, three yellow alerts. And there we go. Okay, so it's come up with with uh, five uh, areas of, of alerts and the amber one in this case is for directory browsing okay so we'll just have a look at the detail on that one okay so that's telling us really that we can browse that folder it should give us some idea about what the risk actually is and then how we resolve it. So we're using the Apache uh, infrastructure. So we could go in with the options here or if we're using IIS, we turn off directory browsing. So hopefully when we try this one here, we'll have a look to see if that really is a vulnerability. Uh, and it is, so you can see here, we can now view uh, the the folders so to improve the security we probably want to be turning uh, that option off there's other ones such as uh, identifying an IP address that might be uh, sensitive within there so that's with inside the uh, response body we're actually revealing an IP address in there and then there's also the X content type uh, headers that uh, are not there and these will control the um, how the, the the content is actually used and how the, the the additional content comes in and probably what we want to do is to lock it to our own site. Uh, so what you hear is that uh, we've not got X frame options actually uh, set. In this case, we can uh, stop 
things like code injection or M X or X frame uh, integration. Okay, so these are the pages that have been identified for that. We can see here the request and then the response for it. So I'll have a quick look at uh, X frames or X headers. Uh, so X headers are a new addition uh, to web pages and they should overcome most of the problems to do with injection attacks. So uh, we have problems in terms of an X frame injection where somebody can actually integrate uh, a, a whole frame from another site through the iframe and the site will look valid but the iframe will integrate from an external site. So this could be used for uh, a user login uh, within say a PayPal site where the iframe was coming in for the logging uh, details. Okay, so they, so we have other ones. We can actually de determine uh, the type options that we have for our, our content. We can protect against cross-site scripting and also for, for downloads, we can restrict the download types that, that we have to say we would don't allow zip files to be downloaded. Uh, so the X frame options allow us to stop X iframes from, from coming in. Uh, the public key pinning allows us to make sure that the certificate uh, that's coming in from the site uh, hasn't ch hasn't changed and needs to be authenticated yeah, each time. And then there's a general content security policy which actually defines where the content is coming in. So perhaps we could just find that the content was only allowed from YouTube and from Twitter and no other sites would be allowed. And that way, the web page wouldn't be allowed to be viewed if there was any other content from uh, those from outside those those pages. Okay, so this is one here. So this says that for our policy, we need to make sure that we only use HTTPS. So no other scripts in the page will be allowed if they use HTTP. And we can also bar. Uh, X frames in, uh, from our pages by defining this uh, meta tag. Okay, so in this way we can stop any injection of, of an X frame. Okay, so let's get back to our scan here. Okay, so we should be able to identify really the main risks and hopefully we can report on them uh, to our company. Uh, so the next one that we'll look at is with the Matildi site. And just let me get the spelling right for this one. Okay, so we're now going to scan this site here. Okay, so th this one will take will take a bit longer because there's there's quite a bit of infrastructure uh, within this one. But the warning sign already is that there's a red flag uh, showing up. There's the red flag there. And it's appearing on this Matilde site. And it relates to this one here. Uh, so we can have a look at the, the alerts as they're coming through. Uh, but we see we have already two path traversals uh, within side this site. And when we look at the detail, oh, we see this is a quite a worrying one. 
So this looks as if it's, if it's exposing the etc password file. And there it is there. Okay, so that's quite worrying that for some reason uh, the infrastructure hasn't protected the password file. And then for this one here, we seem to have an anonymous login there. that one. And then we just grab this one. Uh, so that, that one is much the same, but it looks like with the username anonymous, we can fetch that file there. Okay, so let's see how we're getting on. So for for the site, uh, we're we're seeing uh, path traversals. Uh, we're also seeing application error disclosures. So in this case, uh, these two pages are giving us some scripts in there that actually give us uh, details of 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 how the page is actually working. Okay, so we need to watch uh, for that. Uh, there. Okay, and we can see we're getting lots of errors related to the lack of the X frame options within inside the, the site. So it's really good practice to make sure the X frame options are actually set. Okay, so now we'll look at the PHP My Admin. Uh, site on Metasploitable and we'll just go ahead okay so we can see the the scanner here doing its spidering and it's going through uh, the, the the basic infrastructure for the site so it'll probably take a while to to scan so you can you can quit it after after a certain amount of time but we just have a little look at what the the, the core problems are so we're only we've got a, an an orange alert coming through here uh, for the for this one okay we just have a look here and what we've got is our themes coming through uh, so there's exposure of a few files here that we've got to worry about. Okay, so and there's there's some themes coming through there that we could that that could be exposing some extra information in, in here. Okay, so so that's that's a, a basic overview of uh, of the OWASP zap. Thank you.